I said, like, I love you, mommy. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. You can smile. Okay. You know, you know when you know somebody's happy, they smile with their eyes. You know what I'm saying to you? When, somebody's, when you, you look at somebody, and I'll say, to, I'll say to Oliver, you know, their smile didn't quite reach their eyes, you know? So, okay, so now we've got an opportunity to practice where our smile has to reach our eyes because you have to smile with your eyes, you know what I mean? I was in clicks the other day, and one of the women were like, are you smiling at me or not because your eyes are, like, shining? So I was like, yeah, I'm smiling at you. Yeah, you're getting the point. So yes, so what I want to do is I want all the moms to stand. I want all the moms to stand. If you are a mom or a mom to be, stand up. Yeah, mom is standing. Okay. Now I want everyone who's the moms and the moms that um, are sitting, oh, moms, the moms that are standing and the dads that are sitting, I want you to smile at the moms with your eyes. Look at them. Everyone turn and look at, but you can't just look at your husband or your, you've got to turn around and look at everybody. Okay, and then I want everybody that's sitting to please give a mom a chicken wave, like a hello. Give a mom, I want to see everybody saying, okay, you've got to give a mom a wave across the room. Look at somebody with your eyes and be like, this is for you, Nikki, this is for you. <laughs> all right, happy, a very special happy Mother's Day from the house of the Lord to all our special moms. You may sit down. All right, being a mom is an, is an awesome, awesome privilege and an awesome, awesome blessing. Okay, sometimes I, you know what, I think the moms deserve a round of applause because we know we have to give birth to them babies, and it was hard. Okay, <laughs> no matter even if you feel like it was 100 years ago, you still remember that. I'm sure you moms still remember that. You see, the moms are laughing because they know. Now, in the room, we have a very special mom today. This mom, it's her birthday. Okay. And she's 95 years old today. Okay. She is Mrs. Snook, the, the previous, previous mom of the house. <laughs> I'm going to ask all of us to stand, to stand, and we're going to sing happy birthday to the special mom. Okay, so turn. She's at the back there. You can turn and look toward her. Thank you, Pastor Oliver. Another 92 to go, Pastor Oliver. Hip, hip. Hooray. Uh, I know that being a mom is probably one of the most thankless jobs. I don't want to call it a job, but lives out there. Because even, even husbands don't see a lot of stuff that their wives do. You know, and, and, and all that. And, uh, and often us as kids, we don't thank our moms enough. I think that's why they put a special day so that we can say Happy Mother's Day and we can really thank all the moms. I want to encourage you, uh, allow your kids, allow your husbands or whoever, allow them to spoil you today. So sit back and say, here's the meat, go braai, here's the whatever it is, go do this, go do that. Or for, for those uh, dads that don't want to braai today because it's too cold or whatever, just go to the shop and buy something. But let the moms relax and feel special today. Uh, just from my side, uh, I've got the microphone so I can say things, but I know everyone would like to say things. I just want to just appreciate my mom. Uh, I would say this in German, but then no one would understand. But th thank you. Th thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for the way that you still support me and, uh, um, and Julie. Thank you for the way that you always give of yourself to us and, and specifically for always praying for us. Uh, th thank you so much. And then, uh, and then to my wife, to Julie, the mother of my kids, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, often just, you know, my kids will learn new things and then they'll come and they'll show me or they'll do this and then I'm like, where did you learn that from? And I hear that word mama. And I hear that word mama a lot in my house because but, you know, my wife is just such a good mom and I just want to really appreciate you for, for everything you do and for, 
and for how you lay yourself down and even deal with that while I get to rest up here while preaching. It's easier to preach than look after the kids. You laugh. It really is. You moms know what I'm talking about. Um, and then to Sister Rensha from my side, is she, she just, okay, but a, a, a happy birthday also. And, uh, and she was also a spiritual mom to me for, for many years and still supports me and still sends me messages and, um, and that. And then just a welcome to Andre and Deirdre uh, and, um, and Mercia. Yeah, it's, it's great to have you in the house of the Lord this morning and, and just special to have you here on Mother's Day. But to all the moms, happy Mother's Day. I want to get um, in, into the Word of God, but before I do that, uh, I want to play one more video for you. And, um, and this video is not a Christian video. You're probably wondering, oh, how, can I, how can I play it in church? It's here to make a point that it doesn't matter, moms are moms and they are unique. So Pandora did this experiment, and they were experimenting, would kids know who their moms were if the kids were blindfolded? And they would have a whole bunch of moms standing in front of them, and these kids blindfolded would have to go and go and touch or go and whatever, and each of them, you will see what happened, found their mom because moms are unique. So I just want you to see this, because especially for you as moms, you need to know that you are making a difference in your kids. And they know you. And they know you. And when put in front of a whole bunch of moms, blindfolded, they will still know you. So just watch this video before I get into the Word of God. Moms, if you're wondering if your boys really know, they, they do, we do. And I just want to say to the moms, especially today, stop comparing yourselves. Stop going onto Facebook, onto social media and, and all this and comparing yourselves to the next mom or to the next person and think that you're a failure. You really are doing something that God has anointed you and appointed you to do, but only you can do that in your kids' lives. There's a story in the, um, in the Bible, and, and, uh, and it's the story of Deborah. I'm sure a lot of you moms know about the story already, but uh, there's this woman, she's a judge of Israel, so she was the leader of Israel at the time. Israel kept, kept sinning and, and all that, but 
But Deborah rose as a judge at that time. And, um, and the context that I want you to see it in is that this was Deborah's purpose and what she did with her purpose and, and how she stood up. And I want to encourage you as a mom just, just to look at your life and ask yourself, what has God given me? What is my purpose? And, and just look at it and be like, how can I stand up and how can I be like Deborah? Not everyone here is going to be the leader of South Africa, all the moms. You know, we can only have one person, and at the moment it's a man or whatever. So, so don't try to put yourself in, um, in Deborah's shoes and be like, well, I'm going to lead a whole nation or whatever. No, just put yourself in the shoes God has given you and ask yourself, what is my purpose and how can I stand up and how can I be what God has called me to be? So, uh, so the story goes, and, and I just want to read uh, Judges 5 verse 7. And it says, the villages in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. There's a place where a mother rises and things start to happen. So the story behind it is that Deborah uh, rises up to leadership and she calls Barak, uh, the commander of the army, and says, you need to go and you need to go fight against the enemy. God is going to give the enemy into our hands. So he, as a man, he goes there and he's just like, I'm not going to go until, uh, unless you go with me. You know, I think that's often what happens, even in households, often, you know, like the family doesn't move forward, you know, because, because the role of a mom is really to stand up and to support and really give, like, the go-ahead. I know it's tough to do something when my wife's not in agreement with me. You know what I mean? And even the kids, come kids, let's go. And my wife is like, let's rather do this. I don't want to do that. I'm like, come on. You know what I mean? I'm the head of the house. You know what I mean? But there's a place where the moms come and, and, and they just speak and they do something and things happen. So Deborah says to Barak, she says, okay, I'm going to go with you, but then the victory is going to go and it's going to be a woman that won. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm fine with that. You know what I mean? So he goes into battle. And the interesting part, as you read through, uh, through Judges chapter 4, because Judges chapter 5 is actually the song that then uh, Deborah sings. But Judges chapter 4, go through it, and you'll see Deborah didn't do much. I noticed that when I was reading through the story. Deborah didn't uh, do much. She went and she said, Barak, now go and get 10,000 soldiers from this and this tribe. And Barak did it, and he got everyone together. Moms, I want to tell you, you don't have to do anything. But if there's one thing I know, is that delegation is the skill of a mom. <laughs> Those dishes that are there, it will be a very miserable household if the kids or the husband doesn't go and wash them. Shadrach, is it, you know? <laughs> but the mom is just like, do this, do that, do that, do that. And everything happens. You know what I mean? But same thing with Deborah. She just said, go do that. And Barak did it. And he got all the army together and whatever. Then they go and they go to, 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 uh, into war. And Deborah says, now go and fight. She didn't go and fight. Go read it. She just said, you see, moms, you don't have to do everything. But when you speak, there's something there that causes other people, causes your family to come alive. And do what God wants them to do. So we read the story and, and, that, and that verse. Villages in Israel would not fight. They held back. See, often in life, things don't happen. Things don't happen until the mom steps up and says, let's do this. I'm not taking any, uh, anything away from the men of the house or whatever. I'm just saying there's an important role for the moms. I want to say to you moms, don't, don't think that you don't have a purpose. Don't think that, you know, when, when, when your husband's doing this and doing that and whatever, don't think that you just, oh, man, you know, I don't really have anything. I'm just looking after the kids. You're not just looking after the kids. There's a whole much more that happens. And not because you're doing it, but it's because of the anointing God has given you and you say things and things start to happen. Don't ever stop believing that God has called you and what God has called you to. 
I want to look specifically today, and I want to go to, to the book of, of, uh, of Ephesians, chapter, chapter 6. And, um, and what you have to realize as, as moms is that your fight is not against flesh and blood. So 6 verse, verse 12, and it says there, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. There's something that happens when a mother starts to pray and starts to fight in the spiritual realm. I know often as, as moms you feel like, man, what, 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 what can I do? You know, my husband's going through this and going through that. My kids are going through this and that. Your fight is not against your kids. Your fight is not against your husband. Your fight is not against the circumstances and this and that, people that are coming against you. Your fight is against spiritual things. There's that movie that I'm sure uh, most of you have, uh, they have watched, War Room. It's about a, a woman, about a mom, a wife, who just starts to pray and God starts to work. You see, to what Deborah did, she stood up in faith and she says, this is what we need to do. Even when Barak, the commander of the army, didn't want to do anything, she stood up in faith. I can tell you she prayed. Because how would she have such faith? She knew her God. So she was a person of prayer. Because there's no other way to know God than if you don't pray. You know, you have to pray to know God. So she stood up in faith and said, we're going to do this. And Barak said, come with me. She didn't say, well, if we win... The victory is going to come to me. She says, well, the victory is going to go to a woman then. She didn't say if or something like that. It was this is going to happen. So moms, pray. Get to know God. Pray in faith. Pray with the power. Pray with the authority that God gives you. And you will see things will change in your household. If you've got a stubborn husband... I think every wife maybe thinks that. I don't know. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I don't want to be in that household later. <laughs> we are family. We can talk. My wife's here. I can talk. This is all going on the internet. Lord, help us. That amen, I hope it was, I hope it was recorded. Um, just now I have to get to back to what I was saying. You know what I mean? You know, uh, don't try fight. I tell you something, when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit gets hold of a man's heart, things change. When the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your children's heart, things change. When the Holy Spirit comes and moves, things change. You don't have to fight about it. You don't have to nag about it. Do you know what Proverbs says about a nagging woman? We're not going to go there. I'm, I'm quoting scripture here. You can go and check it out. That's why we're not saying. But there's something that happens, something powerful that happens when the Holy Spirit moves. Stop trying to do it in your own strength. Stop trying to do it in your own strength. Moms, pray. Don't be so busy. Don't get so busy with everything and all this doing everything. Be like Deborah and start to delegate so that you've got time that you can pray, that you can go and you can seek God. Maybe it's time that you say to the dad and you say, go take the kids and go jump on the trampoline again. Or go take them out for a day. Go take them for a walk. Go take them wherever. I need to spend time with my father. You spend time in the place of prayer because that's where the power is. That's where the transformation is. But maybe there's a couple of, of moms here that you're feeling a bit despondent. You're feeling a bit like, you know, I've, I've, I've tried everything. I've raised my child. I've raised my children right. But yet still they made bad choices. I know in our society there's many moms that have kids that went and got addicted to drugs and got addicted to these things and went on their own way and fell off the way 
but they were raised in a Christian household. I'm going to read you the next scripture verse, Galatians 6 verse 9. It says there, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I want to challenge you, moms. Do not stop. Do not give up. Do not stop fighting the spiritual battle that is in front of you. Because let me tell you something. The Bible is true. In Proverbs it says there, raise up a child, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is the Word of God. Stand on the Word of God. I was challenged once, and, and I, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, um, and, um, and the person's not in church this morning, but I was talking to her, and, and, and she was telling me that I pray every morning, and I pray for you, and I pray for your wife, and I pray for your family, and I pray for this one and that one, and I pray for my kids, and I hold the Bible up to God, and I say, God, this is your Word. This is your promise. When I saw her do that, I was like, yeah, you would do that because of the type of person she is. But she, she holds up the Bible and says, God, this is your word. I think more moms need to start to do that and start to declare the word of God and start to declare it back to God. The most powerful prayer that you can ever pray, and this is for men and women, anyone, the most powerful prayer that you can ever pray in your life is this. Just tell God what he's telling you to tell him. Tell God what he's telling you to tell him. That is the most powerful prayer that you will ever pray in your whole life. So go to the word of God. See what it says about your children. See what it says about life. See what it says about believers. See what it says about household of believers. See what it says about the spiritual battle. See what it says about the authority that you have. See what it says about all these things. And start to pray that back to God. Because let me tell you something, God has a bigger heart for your kids than you will ever have. And I know moms have huge hearts. I've seen it. I've seen moms go through these times with their children when they're in, into all this rubbish and whatever. They just keep receiving them back, keep receiving them back, keep receiving them back. And the dads are like, they need to learn their lesson. The moms are just like, And yes, there's wisdom in a lot of different things and how to deal with things and all that. But I'm talking about the heart of a mother. But let me tell you something. God has a greater heart for your kids than you're ever going to have. Start to believe that. Start to believe what the Bible's saying about these things. Be a Deborah. Not doing everything, but standing up and saying, this is what needs to happen. Take authority in the spiritual realm. Because when the Holy Spirit starts to move, supernatural things happen. I want to just pray right now. And I'm just going to pray. No, I'm not going to pray right now. I'm going to pray later. What, what, what I want to do now is, is, um, is we've got a team going up to Venda uh, on a mission trip. It's a team from Shannon and a couple of the staff are also going up. I want to call them up front and we want to pray for them. And we want to pray that God's going to anoint them for what lies ahead uh, they in Venda, they, 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 are, they are going to be doing a whole bunch of different ministry. They're going to be doing chapel services and all this and also helping in, um, in physical ways. So if, uh, if the team can come forward and the staff, if all of you can just come forward and just stand there, we, we want to pray for you and, um, and pray that the Lord would anoint you for what, for, for, for what lies ahead. It's a team of how many of you are going? 21 people are going up to Venda. And uh, it's just awesome uh, to see how, how, how young people and older people are just responding to the call of God and going out and going to, to minister. So let's just stretch out our hands as we, as we just send them off and bless them. Lord, we want to thank you for this team, Lord. And I know that, that even the parents looking in at their kids, Lord, I just like, my, my child is on fire for Jesus. Mom's looking in, my child is on fire for Jesus. I ask, Lord, that, that as this team goes, that firstly, 
they would just experience your anointing upon them, Father. That when they go, when they speak, even if it's to individuals, Lord, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's to crowds, the skits they're going to do, the dances they're going to do, Lord, even the staff, what they're going to do, how they're going to serve, Lord, I ask that your anointing would rest upon them. And that this mission trip, Father, would truly bear fruit, Father, for your kingdom, eternal fruit, God. So we thank you for this, Lord. I thank you for good health for them, Lord. I thank you for strength for them. I thank you for wisdom for them, Lord. I pray for protection protection, Father, even on the roads and while they're there, Lord, I ask that it would really be an outreach that would transform their lives and transform the mission base there in, um, in Venda as well, Lord, that the seeds that are planted would bear eternal fruit. So we thank you for this, Lord, and we send them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. It's one of the things that we do, and also as a mom, you see your kids doing all these things. I know my mom, when I was 13 years old, sent me off. I had my 13th birthday in another country without my parents. I was in the country of Gabon. I don't know how my mom did that. But I think she had a view. She had a vision. She knew there's, there's something for Oliver. So she, she allowed me to go on these things. And moms, just keep encouraging your children because things happen but what we want to do now I want to I want to uh, call up my wife and in these times with these regulations here at church we're unable to hug the moms and I've given so many elbows to different moms and I've waved with a chicken wave and I've done all these things and social distancing and 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 we were just thinking like how are we going to give moms a hug today so there's something small that we're going to give you. We can't give you a physical hug because of different things, uh, but we can give you a hug in a mug. <laughs> so, moms, it's for you. It's not for your husbands. This is a hug for you, and it's a hug that comes in a mug. And, uh, and so, so what I want to do is I want to call all the moms up and come and take your hug from from this basket and just come and stand up here because we, because we are going to pray for you so once you're up here just just, just stay and people can come up on the stage i think once you've taken it just uh, just come up on stage with me okay so all moms please come and take your flavor because each mom is unique you like different things and just come and take your hug that you can enjoy later as you hopefully get a physical hug from your from your children as well. And just spread yourself out on the stage here. Come up. Once you've got your hug in the mug, please come up on stage. There's a lot of space still here on the stage. Sister Rencha, what flavor would you like? I, I, I can come and bring it to you. Would you like this one? You weren't here when I mentioned before, but thank you still for being a spiritual mom to me and everything you do. Thank you. So what we want to do as, as a church is we want to pray for you as moms. And specifically, God has laid on my heart that there's moms here that have been, been believing for supernatural things in your life. Things that you can't do by yourself. Things that that you as a family can't do or whatever, or circumstances, and you've been praying in these things, something supernatural. I'm going to pray that God would come through and that you would see the answer to your prayers. So as I pray for you, just have the thing and just mention it to God. Because let me tell you something, God's heart is greater for that thing than your heart is for that thing. But there is power in speaking it out. So as I'm praying, speak that out. 
But as I was praying about this, the story of Jairus coming to Jesus and, um, and asking Jesus to come to his house because his daughter was dying came, came to me. And Jesus was going. And there was a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. That was his purpose. And this woman came and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. What I felt today is as I'm praying for you, there's going to be someone here. You believing for something. And I believe that as you reach out and you mention that to God, you speak that out, what God wants to do, touch the hem of his garment. Even God's going to come through for you here. So it's not only for the moms. God really laid this on my heart. So there's someone here, you've been believing for something. You've been trusting God for something. As this is God's purpose, but he's got another purpose here as well. He still wants to work supernaturally. So I want to just ask that you just stretch out your hands to the moms right now. Lord, I want to thank you for these moms. Lord, I want to thank you for what they do, God. Lord, and so many times we just take everything for granted, Lord. We just take all these things for granted. And I ask, Lord, that today that all the moms would just experience you, God. And I ask specifically, Lord, for that, for that thing that the moms are going to mention right now, Lord. That thing where they need you to move, where they need something supernatural to happen in that situation, in their lives, in their families' lives. I ask, Lord, as they mention it, Lord, that your power would come and just work, Father, and that they would see the answer to their prayers, God, that they would see the fruit of their faith that they've made, maybe been praying for years and years, Lord, and they've been on their knees and crying out to you, God. I pray, Father, that we will see breakthrough, Father. Even in the next week, Father, we are going to see breakthrough in their lives, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for this, Lord. We bless them. We, we speak your favor. We speak the name of Jesus over them, Lord, and the blessing of Jesus and what Jesus would, would say over them. We speak that over them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do, Lord. And specifically, Lord, we want to pray for even Julie as the mother of this church, Father. And I pray, Father, that you would also anoint her for the, for the purpose and for what you have called her as the mother of this church. Lord, thank you for what she does. Thank you for how she cares, for how she supports, how she prays, how she's, how she's just, just always just coming around and doing all these things and often in the background. But, Lord, I know what it is that she does, Lord, and you know even more, God. And I pray your blessing upon her specifically, God. And we thank you for this, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, and we bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, thank you. You may be seated again. So children that are here and you have moms that are here or, or, or husbands or, or, or whatever it is, when you go home and you see your mom, if you see your mom, as they're drinking the hug in a mug, give them a, a physical hug as well. So they will be warm from the inside and the outside. Um, but thank you so much for joining us in our service this morning. I pray that, especially the moms, that you have been just blown away by God and that you have been stirred up in faith for what God will do through your obedience, just like with Deborah. God wants to do it through you and he wants to use you. Thank you for joining us. Um, as you leave, if you want to leave your tithes and offerings in the treasure chest, there. have a great week and uh, enjoy good brides, enjoy good food that, that the men are going to make for you today and we'll see you next week, same time, same place, right here in the house of the Lord. Thank you.